13, Chris Immersion, Corey Diaz from the New Star, talking more high school football going on this weekend. Hey, Carroll, they stay local this week. They draw Madison Parish. Last week, the Sea Dogs pulled off in a nice, impressive victory on the road over Booker T. Washington in Shreveport, 42 to 18. But now they return to the dog pound to face the Jaguars. Corey, if you recall, the Jaguars struggled last year. They finished 0 and 10. Carroll won their meeting against them 34 to 12 in the regular season for both teams. Tank Washington still is not taking this team for granted. What stands out about Madison, they play real hard. You know, coach got them going. Uh, they, they got their numbers up a little bit. They about 35 kids, um, and we expect them to play us tough. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. They, they got some linemen. They got some big linemen. They got a couple guys who can get out in space and make, and make some plays. I think if our offense uh, stay the course, we'll be fine. Coach Washington, of course, an Ole Miss alum, who's actually uh, pretty nice, pretty happy about the uh, victory of Arkansas this yeah, last the, week. The Carroll fighting Broderick Fobbs, right? It's, the, his, it's his alma mater. Exactly, the, the fighting Fobbses. <laughs> uh, hey, Carroll, if you, I'm just saying, if you haven't thought about it already, change your nickname to the fighting Fobbses. I don't think they're going to go for that. I don't think they're going to listen to us. Know. What do we know? Hey, another game featuring two local teams, St. Fred's taking on Mangum. These two teams met last year. The Dragons fell 38-8 to in Tommy Tharp's final year in Richland Parish. Plenty of storylines on both sides. St. Fred's brings back a ton of talent coming into Friday from last year. Mangum goes into this game with a victory over Rose Pine last Friday. If you recall, they've got a new head coach in Scott Wilcher. Caught up with Andy Robinson, or nicknamed A-Rob, and Coach Wilshire to get their thoughts on this matchup. It's going to be very difficult. Mangum's a good football team. Uh, they have a history of having really good football teams. They've made some great runs. Um, what all the smaller schools kind of mirror, try to mirror in the state. Um, this year's no different. They're returning a lot of young guys. They have a new coach in place, a lot of new energy around the program. And they've done a really good job of switching some things up and getting some guys in some really good spots. And it's going to be a big challenge for us at home here Friday night. Uh, well, we got a lot of young guys. Uh, we got some sophomores playing on the D-line and one freshman, one junior. You know, we have no seniors there. We only have two uh, seniors on, on the field on defense. So, it, you know, it's been, a, uh, it's been a tough go. You know, they're learning, and the only way you can learn is through game experience. That is right. They get more game experience Friday night at 7 o'clock over in at St. Fred's. Hey, let's talk a little ULM football, Corey. Their hearts were broken last Saturday following that loss to Florida State. They were down 21-0 at one point, but they stormed back. The Warhawks were able to tie it at 38 as the game went into OT. Florida State went up first, then ULM nodded things up. But all they had to do, Corey, is make the extra point, and that's debatable. Should they win for two? I personally, I would have went for two. Yeah. Uh, I've heard Coach V since the game on Saturday night talk about, you know, he felt like, you know, his offense was able to move the ball against Florida State's defense. Uh, you know, and coaches in these situations usually have a play stashed away in their back pocket for this particular uh, situation in a football game. And, uh, you know, just from, you know, kind of watching Coach V's teams from afar the last couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he seems to have been a pretty aggressive coach. Uh, I'm kind of surprised he elected to go for the PAT there in the tie. I, I thought he would have gone for the win. And their defense was not stopping you at all. No. That's all shocked about. No, absolutely not. Yeah, uh, you know, Caleb Evans is, has had a phenomenal start to this year. You know, he, he's a guy that I think, uh, you know, in the Sun Belt, he, he's got to be one of the top five or six players in that conference. And obviously, Coach V and, and his offensive staff uh, can lean on him. And I, I think he's he's a guy that can. Uh, this ULM this ULM team to me is. Uh, is, is destined to do some really good things this year, I think. I think so. Here's Coach V explaining what happened after the game. You know, we came up with three turnovers on defense, I think, if I remember right in the second half, which was which was big. And I thought our offense really started to move the football and, uh, you know, finally made some big plays in the passing game. And, uh, you know, Josh uh, Peterson had some big catches. You know, I know Xavier Brown had a big one down there. Jonathan Hodo had a really big one in the corner. And, um, just battle back, but at the end of the day, um, we talked about it last night at the team meeting. You know, told the players the goal was is to battle and get to the second half and the fourth quarter and have a chance to win the game, and we did. I forgot to note that ULM scored 21 points off turnovers to get back into the uh, the mix against Florida State on Saturday. We'll talk more football. Talk a little Louisiana Tech and Grambling up next on the kickoff on Fox 14.